Last month, the Washington Post was first to report that a special grand jury was meeting on a very intense schedule, meeting like three days a week, uh, to consider evidence against the company of former President Donald Trump. Well, tonight, the Washington Post was also first to report that that grand jury has now produced indictments. Criminal charges have been filed against the Trump Organization and its longtime chief financial officer, an executive named Alan Weisselberg. The charges were filed today by the grand jury. They will be unsealed tomorrow afternoon, meaning we will not know the exact nature of the charges until they are unsealed. Um, that reporting has now been confirmed by NBC News and by several other news organizations. But whatever charges we do see tomorrow, we keep being told that may not be the end of the story. And this is what I have questions about. Uh, basically, every news organization that's reported this has, um, has, has sort of put forth this prospect in their own way. Just as an example, I'll tell you, here's how The Wall Street Journal put it today. Quote, the charges expected tomorrow, Thursday, could be the first in a series of charges in the future, particularly if prosecutors are able to gain cooperation from Mr. Weiselberg in order to bolster their broader investigation. So, I am not a lawyer, I have questions. If that is true, why is that true? Why would prosecutors approach it that way? Why are people who know these things telling the public that it's a reasonable expectation that there might be additional indictments beyond the one that we're now told is coming tomorrow? Why, even theoretically, or why, as a matter of course, would prosecutors wait to add more charges later against either the individuals and entities that are going to be charged tomorrow or, indeed, against other people involved here? Joining us now is Donya Perry. She previously served as an assistant U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York, also as a deputy attorney general for the state of New York. We should mention that this state case that apparently is going to produce these indictments tomorrow has apparently been a joint operation between the Manhattan DA and the New York Attorney General's office. Ms. Perry, it's nice to see you. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Rachel. Glad to be here. Am I asking a dumb question about this uh, superseding, potential superseding indictment um, advice that we keep getting uh, along with the reporting about tomorrow's expected charges? You are asking a great legal question. And uh, look, there may be inside information that, that people are actually aware that there are additional charges coming. But I think as someone who's prosecuted uh, both federally and in the state system, as you point out, um, my observation is that is almost certainly correct. And I think there are a number of, of different flags for that. The first is, DA Vance has always made clear that one of the animating principles here is equality under the law. And as he has said, that no man, not even a president, is above the law. The flip side of that coin is that no one, not even a president, should be scrutinized more closely or held to a higher standard or more heavy-handed prosecution than anybody else. And he has made that clear, and I believe that he is a believer in the rule of law. And so it was a head scratcher when it's, it was announced, including by Trump's lawyers, that the charges to be filed, or I'm sorry, that now have been filed, uh, appear to be very narrow and focus particularly on fringe benefits. As Trump's lawyers have pointed out, that's highly unusual. It's, it's unusual for a corporate entity to be char charged criminally in the first instance, and it's even more unusual for them to be charged with fringe tax benefits, you know, or uh, payroll tax evasion and, and the like. And so it does seem like there is something missing here and that there will be either additional charges in a superseding indictment or perhaps that the, the fraud scheme that is actually alleged in this initial indictment will be broader than Trump's lawyers have, have made it appear to be. It could be a larger tax scheme. There may be additional tax fraud acts or it could be a larger scheme to defraud. But it does seem that this is part of something bigger and that either we will see that tomorrow or I expect in due course we will see that as part of a superseding indictment. But why would they be sequenced? Is there something about an initial indictment like the one we're expecting to see tomorrow that would somehow facilitate or, or make possible a second indictment with either additional charges for those same defendants or charges against new defendants that aren't named in, in tomorrow's charges? I mean, that's the thing that I don't understand. If there is a broader scheme uh, that prosecutors are pursuing here and that they want to try in court, why wouldn't 
we learn about it all at once? So the, the, the quick answer with respect to Weisselberg is that he is being charged because they want to put a squeeze on him. And there is nothing more persuasive than charges that are actually filed in order to convince a target to actually flip and give the goods on other targets. So it could very well be that Weisselberg is being charged now in order to turn him so that he can then provide evidence against a bigger fish, likely Donald Trump himself. With respect to the organization, it could be part of the same answer. It could be that the facts are still developing. But as I said, I do suspect we will see tomorrow. This is not just a small penny ante, or as you called it, small potatoes case uh, with respect to just fringe benefits, uh, but it will actually be a larger scheme to defraud. Uh, and that may develop based on whether or not they turn Mr. Weisselberg or others, but I, I think we will see a larger, a larger case that will evolve. Donya Perry, who has experience in these matters as a former assistant U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York, that's the federal side, and as a deputy New York attorney general, that's the state side. Uh, thank you for your time tonight. I, I think everybody is going to be um, obviously waiting on that news um, in, in the afternoon, but I think even once we see those charges, we're going to need further explanation from people who've done this stuff like you. Thanks for being with us here tonight, Donya. Thank you. Good night. All right. We've got much